Hi, everybody. It's Talk To Me Tuesdays. It's your girl, Anja, and I'm here with one of the best artists that I know. She is so good and so passionate about what she does. She redesigned her entire kitchen. Please help me welcome cookie designer, Jenna. Hi, Anja. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so excited to talk to you because like your cookies are bomb.com and they are the best on Instagram. So I'm ready Thank to get you. into this. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go. So where and how did you even like, where did this cookie thing come from? Just like, I got questions. Just honestly, on a whim, I was meal planning for the kids one week and I was like, well, let's make some heart shaped cookies and the icing kept sticking together. And in the comments, somebody was like, oh, you should try royal icing. And I was like, what is that? And then it sent me down like this warm hole spiral. And I was like, I'm doing that for my daughter's first birthday. And I just picked it up and it, it was easy to me. Like it just came naturally. I, I didn't struggle with it. And I just dove right into it. And I found this whole creative side that I didn't know any existed like at all. Wait what so like you like this literally just came out of kind of an accident yes totally okay so do you ever have like the best cookies like for you know how like parents have to bring cookies and desserts to like I don't know preschool or whatever do you ever have like the best so my according to my teenager I am the worst because I never let them have cookies <laughs> I only sell them and I don't tend to keep a lot of extras on hand. However, there are times where I've taken like little mini hearts and I've individually heat sealed them so she can hand them out to her friends um, and all of her friends and her teachers get excited. I always gain new teacher followers and um, they're always like, when can your mom bring us cookies? So always, every time it happens, they ask for it, but it's not very often. <laughs> love that. My question is, so it kind of started as an accident, probably turned into a hobby, right? So how did you decide you're going all the way with this business? So I had people asking me to make them cookies. Um, and I was like, well, it takes so long. I didn't feel comfortable just making a ton of cookies for people and giving them out all the time because that takes away time for my family. So I knew I'd have to charge for them, but I knew that there were laws put in place. Like you can't just charge people for cookies and not have your licenses. So I went ahead and looked into the, all the local laws. So I got a cottage food license, which is like a health permit. I got, um, a state license, a state tax permit. Um, I got a city license. I have like what's called a fictitious firm name or a doing business as so that I can do business as Newberry Cookie Co versus Jenna Siska. So, right. so how did you come up with the name? So, um, as you may know, because we've been friends for years and years and years and years, um, I am originally from Pennsylvania. Um, I'm from Williamsport, so go Little League. Um, and the original part of Williamsport where they had Little League is called Newberry. It's like okay. this little township. And that is where I'm actually from is the Newberry part of Williamsport. And I feel like a lot of what I do is reflective of my roots. And so I wanted to pull it back from my roots and that's how I got Newberry. Oh, that's so cute. I know as military kids, sometimes we can like be so dis, uh, what, detached from our roots. Yes. So it's very cool that you went there for your name. Yes. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times, you know, with us growing up, you know, moving around all the time, you know, you tend to take bits and pieces of where you lived and that becomes who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always tried to reflect back on like, who was Jenna when she was little before all of those moves. And like, I, I really try to bring that person into who I am with what I do, no matter where I'm at. So what's your biggest inspiration for your cookies? Because they range from anything like super artsy to like, I don't even know how you describe, how would you describe your cookie art? 
So they're definitely very artistic and creative. Um, I took a couple of classes early on from someone, um, Sweet Cheeks by Renee, and she talked a lot about using texture and kind of incorporating in different pieces. And then I've taken other classes that tell you, you know, choose or not really classes. I did collaborations. Um, and so you kind of go in and bakers from around the world will come in with one theme and you have to bake one cookie to that theme. Um, and when I first did it, they recommended finding your inspiration from things like fabrics, invitations, um, everyday home decor. And so when I get cookies these days or cookie orders, I, my first thing is I want to see the invitation. Um, I'm going to go off of the invitation the most, and then I'm going to look at any party decor that you plan to use. And if I don't see anything else or they don't give me anything else, I'm doing that. I'm looking at fabrics. I'm looking at home decor or party decor. Um, it's not necessarily like I don't like to look at other cookies when I'm designing a set. So I just want to, or artwork. Sometimes I'll just look at photography and pull something from that image. So a lot of goes into these Instagram worthy yes. cookies. Yes. How do you make sure they taste good? Um, I, I got lucky. The recipe I started with tasted pretty good to start. Okay. Um, there's a lot of making sure that you have the correct balances. I live in a much higher elevation than some other people. Um, throughout the country. And so there's certain things with my baking that I have to make sure that, you know, your cookies cook properly and don't dry out. I don't overbake, um, you know, adding the correct proportions, but also I had to adjust things like baking powder, um, and making sure that I actually freeze my dough before I bake it so that it prevents them from spreading. But I don't, I, I prefer a soft bite of a cookie. And so, and I prefer flavor. So you're not going to just taste flour when you bite into my cookies. You're going to taste the vanilla. Um, you're going to taste almond. Um, I use an imitation almond for allergy safety. Um, for That's my standard cookie. And then I do use um, vanilla cookies only too sometimes, but you're going to taste the flavor. It's not just flour. It's and like I said, a soft bite, um, the icing, I like it to have a little bit of a softer bite as well. So you'll have a, like a little bit of a crust and then you crunch through and it's just like soft. So how many times do you burn cookies and have to like start over? Or are you Never. Past that? No. Never. Oh, I don't. Cool. I, I'm like, so I don't know if it's really OCD. I'm just like, it's not going to happen. Okay. I, so baking is my least favorite part of the job. Like, oh, honestly, really? I, I really love the decorating portion. Yeah. And so there's no way I'm going to rebake something. <laughs> Just not going to happen. The timers are set. There's multiple timers. I'm not leaving my kitchen. I'm staying right there. And I will watch them until they are like just done. And I pull them out. <laughs> I love that. So at what point did you look at your husband and be like, we need an entire new kitchen and we need to destroy everything. And <laughs> I have a dream. What so did he say? We, we actually, we redid the outdoor kitchen the year before. Um, and it was always a goal to redo something with the kitchen. Um, our kitchen just kind of felt dark and dingy and it was a little small and we needed more space. And I was like, I can either continue taking over your office and every nook and cranny of this house with baking supplies, or maybe we could put in a baking center. And it has cabinets above and it has cabinets on the side and drawers below. And I just, he supports me and whatever I do. And so he made it happen. And I, so did you design it? Like, how does that work if you want to design a kitchen? Do you have to call a contractor or do you? So we did this project sans contractor. Um, we did, we had an interior designer who was incredible and she took what our dream was for this kitchen and made it happen. Um, and then we had a couple of quotes from contractors and they were just above and beyond what we felt we wanted to pay for it. Like it was like 
over the whole budget for the kitchen, basically. Mm -hmm. And so we had a family friend who was a contractor come in and look at everything. And he was like, you don't need a contractor for this kitchen. You need the right people. And so he gave me his people to use Mm -hmm. and was like, you need these people. Um, And luckily we just got we had the right people and we took out a wall even and like added a column. Were you and... nervous to do that type of construction inside your home? Um, I think I was just so relieved that the wall was gone. I didn't even think about the nerves. <laughs> You're like, we actually, knew... no, I was ready. I was yeah, ready. Yeah, we were ready. We knew there was going to be a column in the kitchen for the plumbing and electrical, which is coming from the upstairs down. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we found out, even though multiple contractors said it is not a supporting wall, that there was some support in there, we, we weren't worried because we were just like, we'll make the column a little bit bigger and we're good to go. So what are three things in your new kitchen that helps you turn your dream into reality for Um, baking? My double oven. Your double oven. My double oven with convection. So before I could bake one, maybe two cookie sheets at a time, I can now bake six. I can (laughs) pop them in, pop them out, rotate. Um, This baking center is insane. I have all of my icing colors at my fingertips and the drawers. I just open the drawer. Everything's right there. I'm not having to dig through bins. Um, my one mixer on the counter is for icing. I have another mixer called a Bosch that it's like, it's just this big old bulky mixer and I can do four batches at once. And so I just pop that out of the drawer, use it and pop it away. Um, those I mean, honestly, having like everything at my fingertips is probably the biggest. And then that. Wait a minute. So you have two kids. How do you keep them out of your stuff? Um, I do it when they're not around. Oh, okay. So, I mean, my teenager's not as bad. Um, She really doesn't mess with anything unless she wants to be grounded for life. Um, And then the three-year-old's a little harder to tame. So for the most part, I was only doing cookies at night and after she'd go to bed. So like 9 p.m. to like 2, 3 Uh, a.m. So your sacrifices is with sleep. Yes. Um, But she started going to preschool. So now we have a couple days during the week where she's at school and I'm going to try and rebalance and get some sleep back. (laughs) Yes, sleep. So dealing with the public can be very hard. How do you either go about pleasing people or angry customers? Have you ever had to deal with that yet? Um, I haven't really had angry customers. I I think I'm pretty good at setting expectations from the beginning. Um, I will not accept or agree to a set that I don't feel that I can confidently do for them. If I get an order request for a theme that it's just like, I just don't think I would the right person for them, I'll let them know. And I'll give them- You don't try and talk them into like a different type of thing? Like, I can't really do giraffes, but I can do elephants. Um, I had one that they wanted something specific and I was like, I can't do that. And they're like, well, I can narrow it down to this. And I was like, I can't really do that either. Like, there's just not much what you can go on. Um, I don't do characters or licensed things, um, copyrights. I, I won't do it. And there's a lot of people who do, but it's breaking the law. And I'm not willing to lose my business over breaking the law just for somebody to have some cute cookies at the party. Okay. So like those types of things, I'm I'm happy to do inspired sets. Like, um, you know, if you gave me a princess type thing, maybe I could do a special type of crown or like snowflakes for frozen and just kind of, you know, pull some colors and things in there. Have you ever felt like maybe like, I know you don't like breaking the law, but have you ever like felt pressure to maybe bend like, uh, like, should I? No, I'm just like, I'm just, no, it's like, it's just not worth it. And I feel like I'm busy enough without trying to break a law that I don't, I don't feel like I need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not willing, I'm just not willing to jeopardize my business over it. And it's like, I'm booked out through October right now. There's no, oh. like, so it's like, so I just, I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm struggling to get orders or anything. It just, you know, it just, well, how do you market yourself? Do you do word of mouth? Is it word of mouth for the most part, word of mouth. Um, I, I do Instagram and Facebook. I don't advertise though. Um, I, 
I'm very reliant on the fact that people share to their stories or I do use the hashtags for our local cities. Um, so I'm sure they pop up in some people's feeds, um, but a lot of it's just word of mouth. Um, I, I've gotten lucky in this community to know some pretty great people that have helped spread the word of my cookies. Now you do kind of like high in luxurious cookies. So does anybody give you like pushback for your prices? Um, I get ghosted a lot. So okay. I'll, I'll quote an order. Um, I think for the most part, my general quotes are between 65 to 75 a dozen right now. Um, and I have a two dozen minimum. Um, and if I quote somebody high, a lot of times they don't give me pushback. They just don't respond. Okay. And it's fine. I mean, I won't put them on my calendar until they respond and pay for an invoice anyway. So okay. it's not like it's really wasting my time a ton, except for the couple minutes that it takes to respond to the email. Does that hurt your, like, not ego, but does it hurt your heart because, like, this is, no? No, no. <laughs> you're like, like, before I even no. finish, you're like, no, I'm good. No. I'm booked. I'm booked. I'm booked. I'm fine. If, you know, if they don't book me, somebody else will. Um, you know, sometimes there's a theme and I'm like, oh, I really would have loved to do that theme. And there was one last year I got really bummed. I had sent her a quote for the celestial baby shower theme and I didn't hear back. And I was a little bummed about that one because I was like, I really wanted to do that. Well, turns out she had the baby and months later contacted me and was like, we're going to have like a delayed baby shower. Are you still able to do cookies? And I got to do it anyway. And I was so excited. <laughs> so cool. So when do you practice? So do you like, how, how do you practice? Do you practice on fake cookies? Or do you make a batch and then sit and just practice? No, I no. just kind of practice as I go. I mean, I did, I did attend Cookie Con. So Cookie Con is this convention that travels um, a couple times a year. It goes across, you know, I think next year it's in Ohio and maybe Orlando again. Okay. Um, last year it was in Reno or this past year. Um, and so I got to go in the spring to the Reno one because um, it came right to me. I mean, how could I miss that? Um, and I did sign up for extra classes there. And so, you know, you could try and take extra classes, but I have a tendency to buy classes with the intention of taking them to like learn new techniques. And I never do them. Like, I just, I don't have the time or I forget. Um, and so if there's a new technique I want to learn, maybe I saw something in that class and I'm like, I definitely want to use that on the set. And then I'll pull up the class if it's an online class and I'll try and work on it as I'm doing the order. So growing up, I know your mom used to do cakes for all different kind of events. I mean, she made several of my birthday parties or birthday cakes and she's fantastic. How does that inspire you or what does that do to you when you're pursuing your own kind of like baking business? So I think growing up around baking and watching my mom juggle you know, this business with four kids, um, I, I think I just kind of realized, well, if she could do it with four unruly children, I can do it with two, one of which is unruly and one of which is old enough to be responsible. Um, <laughs> but I just kind of like, I already knew a lot of the terminology coming into it. I already knew um, how to use decorating tips and everything. Um, I don't use a lot of tips unless it's for florals. Um, most of the time I just use tipless bags, but it's like, I, I knew a lot coming into it. And maybe that helped me that when I got started, it just came easier learning how to mix colors. I knew where to find things. I knew, um, whether it was at the store or online, I just kind of knew what to look for. So how do you avoid being burnt out and being like, I don't want to make another single cookie. Like, how do you keep passionate about it? How do you keep motivated? How do you keep just so excited about your passion? Breaks. Breaks. Um, okay. breaks. So I will admit during the summer, it is very hard with kids off of school um, to keep going. Um, your kids want to go to Lake Tahoe. Your kids want to go to the water park. Um, it's very challenging to keep up with all of them and do cookies and lack sleep. 
Um, so I definitely took most of the summer off. And then, you know, you have things like bachelorette parties and bridal showers, and you're traveling back and forth across the country trying to, you know, be there for all these loved ones. Um, and there were a few weeks that I was like, I'm not making cookies these weeks. I just can't do it all. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely breaks and recognizing your, your level of burnout and your, how many cookies you can actually do within the time frame that you want to work and giving yourself time off. I don't work on the weekends. My cookie order pickups are on Fridays. I understand some people have parties on Saturdays and Sundays, but my cookie order pickups are on Fridays and respecting that family time um, really helps a lot. So I'm just kind of blown away at your level of knowing who you are, what you're willing to compromise and what you're not, and your ability to create these boundaries with your business. I mean, how did you get to this level of this level? I think crossing those boundaries initially um, and realizing what that was doing to me. Um, how I was feeling, how, you know, exhausted I was. And, you know, when your kids come up to you and they want to go do something, you're like, I can't, I have to work. It hurts. It sucks. Like you, you want to be there for your kids um, and learning those boundaries and trying to find that balance and do what you love, um, but also be there for who you love. And so it's just, you know, honestly going over those boundaries so many times and then realizing I can't let this happen. I think that can be said for so many things in so many areas and for like people like you, moms and wives and just single, like just everybody. I think that's a true gym that you just gave. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So tell me more. Tell me more. So what is the biggest challenges? Like, I know we've already talked about a couple different things, but what would you say being a cookie artist, what are some of your biggest challenges that you're faced while either making the cookies or talking to people to place orders? Challenges that so you're faced? designing is, can be challenging sometimes. Like I know I have it in me to design a good set, but like Sometimes it's hard. You go sit down. You're like, oh, I have this time to design. And you go to sit down to design and you're not in the design mood. And you can't like just pull that creativity out sometimes. Um, so for instance, last night I was up pretty late working on a set for this week, trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Um, and I normally have all of my sets designed by Sundays. And so trying to figure that out last minute was kind of stressful. And I was you know, messaging an other cookie friend and like, you know, SOS, help me. Like, what am I doing wrong? You know, am yeah. I crazy to think of this design as a good one or should I alter it? And it's like, and then it just clicked. And I was like, oh, never mind. I got it. I got um, it. I just needed to talk it out. I just needed to talk it out. Um, that's challenging. Um, unrealistic expectations is challenging. So cookies are a multiple day process. They require a lot of time. Um, I don't like to buy a lot of cutters. So I like to do my designs on um, basic shapes or plaques a lot of the time. I do have some cookie cutters like florals and wedding dresses, you know, some baby related ones, but I definitely don't, like I'm not going to go, um, I don't wanna go buy like a video game controller cookie cutter like how often am I really going to use that or a puppy face cutter like I'm not going to use it all the time so I'm not going to buy it um and sometimes people are very adamant about what shapes they want and they're just not the customer for me and I'm not the cookier for them um but time also like when somebody says hey I need cookies tomorrow how is that how much in advance do I have to be like I need cookies so like, for me being like? booked out, I mean, months in advance is preferred. Um, on occasion, I have some kind of opening, maybe, you know, maybe my daughter's band practice is canceled or something, or like, you know, something kind of opens up part of my schedule and I'm like, I could easily get in another set. But if it's within two weeks, there's going to be a rush fee added because I have to rush to make sure I have all the supplies. I have to rush to make sure that those designs are done. Normally I am designing weeks in advance. I'm not normally designing like the night before. 
Um, so it's like scrambling to get those done, but then it takes a few days to do the cookies. I have to mix the dough. I have to freeze the dough. I have to bake the cookies. I have to make sure they cool down. Um, I have to mix all of my icing, all of my icing colors can take hours just for the icing colors. You have to flood your cookies, decorate your cookies. I mean, there's just like all the detail work. If there's gold, um, the paintbrush you paint with gold is like the teeniest, teeniest, tiniest paintbrush. And you have to paint it with Everclear and it just takes so much time. So it's like, you have to account for all of these things. Um, and the cookies have to dry. You have to make sure they're dry and then you have to heat seal them and package them. And it's just it's a lot. And you it's are a lot. one man show. Yes. And then you do it. And when you do it all by yourself, like you don't have a team of people coming in and saying, okay, I'm done with this stuff. You handle the rest and passing it off. You're doing it on your own. So amazing. All right. So last words of wisdom for anybody trying to follow their dreams, anybody trying to start their own cookie business, anybody who's just trying to be amazing like you, last words of wisdom, last little gem, what do you have for the people? Um, I would say if you're trying to follow your dreams, go for it. I mean, just, just jump in and try. Um, for cookies, I would definitely recommend finding classes that you can take. There's a lot of them available online. There's some in-person classes and seeing if it's really for you. You don't have to go buy all sorts of equipment and everything to get started. You really could use what you have around your house. Um, I think, you know, getting some basic things like piping bags, um, would be a great start and, you know, making sure you have a decent cookie sheet. But other than that, like, I think you can do a lot with what you already have and working your way up. I wouldn't jump into, you know, opening your own business and um, investing all this money into your licensing um, and, you know, your websites and all that until you feel confident enough that your designs are where you want them to be to sell them and always own your own work. Don't copy somebody. And, you know, pretend that you're somebody else. I think that's huge because people are going to come to you for you. They want to see what you can do. Um, and if you're copying somebody, you'll never kind of find your groove. Um, I think, you know, making sure that you really bring who you are into what you do. Jenna, that is so, I just love that so much. I know <laughs> I say, I love that, but like, I really genuinely love what you had to say today. I think that being who you are, showing up, having boundaries, everything that you said is just really staying true to yourself. And I think like, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tell these people where they can find you. Um, you can find me on Instagram or Facebook. Instagram's probably the better place because I'll share more there. Um, Newberry Cookie Co. It's N-E-W-B-E-R-R-Y Cookie Co. Um, and you can find all of my art there and links to my websites and everything else. If you're local, um, feel free to place an order. Um, yeah, that's it. Sweet. As always, guys, you already know I'm going to put all her information right here below so you can go check Jenna out. Um, yeah, so you guys have been watching Talk To Me Tuesdays. Once again, it's your girl, Unja. You can find me at it's your girl underscore Unja. Once again, it's your girl underscore A-N-J-A. Don't forget to like, like, and describe. Subscribe? Yeah, that's the word. Okay, and uh, I'm going to show you some cookies right about now. <laughs>